So um, there's a yoga teacher in Ireland who I have studied with online. Her, na her name is Lisa Peterson. And I was introduced to her work through Donna Fari, who I've done a teacher training with. I know you all have heard me talk about Donna before. And Lisa is one of the, I've never met her in person, um, but through what, the work that she does online, I, I've, I can sense that she's just this um, very gentle uh, spirit. And um, I really like her classes. So if you ever want to kind of venture off, I think um, you can find her online pretty easily. And she does a lot of a gentle somatic uh, work. It's really beautiful. Um, and she, I'm on her mailing list and um, she wrote this uh, today. I got this was in my inbox and I'll only read you part of it. Um, I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions. Nature is still hunkering down, hibernating, resting, digesting, and dreaming. It makes sense to me that we follow these ryth rhythms. Now, remember, she's in Ireland. In my part of the world, the Celtic wheel guides us through the seasons. It turns in February at Imbolc or St. Bridget's Day. The, sun the snowdrops are already out. The crocuses are bud budding and spring is preparing to spring. So this is February 2nd. I don't know if any of you um, celebrate in bulk. Uh, the period between the winter solstice and in bulk. So this is very much a, you know, a ritual of the year, you know, that the in bulk is halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. The period between the winter solstice and in bulk, according to teacher Mari Kennedy, is a time for listening, visioning, and dreaming a time to ask what is wanting to emerge and what is new beginning to arise. The Celtic Wisdom School describes it as a voyage of whispers, of sensing into your holy longing. We dream through the body and in the body. It's the, rest, it's the repository of our thoughts, emotions, and spirit. It's the place where we feel both longing and belonging. It's the form we use to take action and make change. We don't transcend the body in spiritual work. We go through it to understand ourselves and the world. So let's sit up straight and tall. And see if any of those words touched you. Um, this sense of slowing down and going inward and understanding yourself on a more deeper level. Do you take time for this kind of work? Are you, you know, go, 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 where the, the turning inward is difficult? And if so, try to offer yourself time for more. Carve out the time in your day as best as you can to offer times of introspection, listening, dreaming, just being. So drop into that sense in your body now. Bring your awareness into your breath. Slow things down. Let the slower pace of the breath help the mind to also slow down. Maybe even you feel a slowing of your heartbeat. As one layer of you starts to settle, <clears throat> you might notice that there's turbulence on levels that you weren't aware of just even a few minutes ago. So as you start to settle and relax and have uh, a turning inward of your awareness, what is coming? What's, what are you noticing that you weren't noticing before? 
Can you scan your body? Can you notice if there's any places where you would like to offer support, love, care? Do the same, scan your heart. Is there anything in your emotional body, your spirit body that needs tending? Can you care for yourself like you would care for another? the hands together at the heart and bow. Offer into your intention, whatever it is that you need today to support your well-being. Let's go ahead and open our eyes if they were closed and find our way onto our mat. All right, so as you come to lie down on um, <clears throat> your back, enjoy. <clears throat> it's such a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful way to start your practice, to be horizontal. There's an aspect of letting go that happens when you lie down that I think can be very symbolic that we are here now in our practice and all the other things uh, can start to fade away. The to-do lists, the, all the possible distractions can start to um, lessen their hold. And you can come into the sanctuary of your practice. Okay, let's reach your arms, find a beautiful stretch. Maybe you want to stretch one side and the other, maybe you just want to Big full body stretch, but let what's happening in your spine kind of give you uh, the, the jump start for your practice. There's this beautiful um, kick start that happens when we just stretch our arms overhead. So feel into that. And then opposite of that, bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit and rest the weight of your head on the ground and feel the ease a sense of softness and surrender that can come. All right, let's circle. And make sure you go both directions and feel uh, the uniqueness of letting there be a little bit of feeling of massage across your sacrum looseness in your femur bones and your hip joints. <clears throat> All right, and then let's open the knees away from each other and bring them back in. And just feel into the beauty of your hip joints and what the range of motion is available right now. And then when you're ready, take the soles of the feet together and just have a moment of Sukta Baddha Kanasana. If you feel like you need support, take some blocks underneath your outer legs for a moment so that you feel relaxed and comfortable and supported. Bring your arms out to the sides or anywhere you feel comfortable. And just have a moment to receive, to let your body be open. And of course, you know, we haven't done much of anything yet, so maybe your body doesn't feel very open just yet. But consciously offer that spaciousness. Breathe well. All right, we'll bring our knees back together and knees into the chest. Pick up your head and a snug little ball. Inhale, expand your body open, stretch out your limbs. And now while you're out here, stay for a moment. 
and wiggle your fingers, roll your wrists, wiggle your toes and roll your ankles. Just feel into the edges of the body. And then let's try to internally rotate our thighs and then externally rotate and then internally rotate and externally rotate. And then when you're ready, next exhale, draw your knees into your chest and pick up your head. Allow your head to rest back down onto the ground. Right knee into your chest, left leg comes long on the ground. All right, so feel free to move around, wiggling your toes, rolling around in your ankles. Feel that compression in your hip joint and knee joint, enjoy it. Give yourself a good hug, a good squeeze, and then change sides. Left knee comes in, right leg long. Feel into that length from your crown to your foot. Move around in your toes or your feet, however feels good. Enjoy the good squeeze. All right, pick up both knees. Now we're gonna put our right foot, I'm sorry, left foot down on the ground. Cross your right leg over your left leg and come to a bit of a hip stretch, drawing your knees toward your chest. Look like eagle legs. Right, the head comes down, heavy, shoulders relax down and heavy. And then switch, right foot comes down, left leg crosses over right, draw your knees inward toward your chest. And you can hold anywhere, you can hold along your shins, your feet, your knees. Remember to stay nice and heavy in your neck and shoulders, the base of your skull, the weight of your skull, everything dropping. All right, and release and that. Take your feet wide on the edges of your mat and let's just start to windshield wiper our knees, a nice gentle beginning twist here. Are you connecting in with your breathing? Can you feel the fullness of your inhales and the length of your exhales? All right, left leg long on the ground, right knee back into the chest. We're gonna cross the right leg over to the left. And you know, you don't, don't think about coming all the way down to the ground. I mean, if that happens, that's great, but there's no goal to get there. Instead, think of the goal of stretching open your chest. So with that right arm, experiment with where you want that arm to land and see if you can get it to land. The hand is on the ground. Stretch through your pecs, breathe deeply into your ribs. Then come back to center, change sides. Left knee comes in, right leg long on the ground. Twist over to the right and Try not to have this goal of going deep into the twist. You can let your leg be off the ground and then focus on the arm stretch. So you can reach, you can have your arm straight out to the side or a little bit more up overhead. Experiment with what feels good and breathe deeply. And then back to uh, your back. Stretch out like your star again. Breathe deeply as you exhale, knees into your chest, pick up your head. Relax your head back down, roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. And so feel free to start with some cat cattles or maybe you'd rather start with other movements of the spine. So we're just taking some time here to explore what's available in our vertebrae right now. So allow yourself to open. Imagine um, that each movement that you do, uh, you're just liquefying a lot of stuck places where you start to feel that all that tight fascia can loosen and soften and you can, you can become more mobile and free. Feel free to move in any way that serves. So there's no rules about where you should be going right now, just let your body be free. A lot of times it's nice if you just don't think very much and let the body do the thinking and just follow. 
The body usually will know what it wants to do if you just get out of the way. So remember, we're not trying to transcend the body. We're moving through the body. All right, let's stretch down into child's pose. Drop your seats toward your heels. Adjust anything that needs adjusting. And take a moment to let your head drop to feel the, the softness of your skull, of your brain. Iyengar has a great quote. Let's see if I can remember it. I think it is, um, yoga is the journey of the self, through the self, to the self. So, you know, we don't go anywhere without our body. So use your body, use your breath as a tool to get into that space of the spiritual development that we're searching for and that this time of year really lends itself to. Walk your hands over to one side of the mat. Feel the weight of your sit bones drop down. Feel the sense of ease through your skull and open your rib cage up. Okay. And let's walk over to the other side and enjoy the freedom that you feel here. And coming back to center, up on tall fours, move the spine about again, and then find your way up to dog pose. So let's stretch through our legs now. We're waking up some different parts of the body. So you can pick one foot up and then place it back down, kind of like you're kneading like a cat. Maybe you want to drop one heel and feel that Achilles stretch and then move into the other one. Okay, so just find your way into the sensations of the body, increasing that somatic awareness, that sense of interoception. Feel once you get a little bit aware, that sense of yielding where you can drop your weight into the earth. And then from that rebound and uh, stretch through your body. So can you feel the interplay of gravity and the support of the earth? Where are you touching? Can you feel the roots of your hands as much as the roots of your feet? Can you melt the skin on your face? Can you melt your brain inside your skull? Is the breath capable of going a little deeper or a little slower? And then let's walk our feet forward. Come into Uttanasana. Bend your knees as much as you want to. Wag your tail, shake your head, whatever feels good. Inhale for a halfway lift. Grow through the spine. Feel the length and space that you have here in a halfway lift. So stretch the backs of the legs, even the backs of the knees. Feel the spaciousness and length in the spine. On your next exhale, melt and fold. Relax your skull. Inhale to rise up. Coming up to stand when you feel ready. Okay, arms can come to the sky. Breathing deeply. All right, so lean back, open the chest. Feel into that big open space where you can hug the back body a little bit and open the front. And then release the hands down. Go ahead and shake out your hands like you can just release something that might be holding through your arms. And then arms come up again. Big breath. Now press your, press your arms straight out to the sides. Lift your chest. Open your collarbones. Lift your fingers toward the sky. Find the breath. Now lift your right ear upward. Back, left ear up. Come back. And your right ear upward. Come back. And your left ear up. And then just relax and give those hands a good shake again. Take your feet a little bit wider than your hips or much wider than your hips, however you're comfortable with. They can even just be hip width apart. And let's just loosen up the spinal twisting here. So just feel into that sense that you can be very at ease, that there's not a lot of strain or tension holding you here. 
and loosen up the spine. This is such a great thing to do for spinal mobility as well as for your breathing. There's a lot of massage that kind of happens along your diaphragm and rib cage. Okay, and then start to bring the arms out. You can bend your knees a little bit more. I'm just feeling that fullness of spinal twisting. And then arms up. A little more squats. All right, and then take your feet and turn to the side edge of your mat if you want. Wide legs. Standing star, take a deep breath in, exhale back toward a goddess. Moving that energy up and then trace right down, feel the energy drop down your body. Inhale, lifting the energy up. And then exhale, dropping it down. Just warming up the strength of our legs, but more importantly, feeling that energetic connection of body and breath, feeling the sense of yielding and grounding. Now, if you have a, a knee or an ankle or a hip or something that doesn't like this, just go wherever your body feels best supported. It doesn't have to be super deep. Last one. Stay down there, okay. drop weight into your feet, hands stay low for a moment. Spin your feet like darlets, so push your feet, your toes down into the ground and then drag them behind you. And then pull your heels down into the ground and move them forward in front of you. Wake up a lot of those small muscles. Now pulse just a couple of times up and down with your body. Keep the chest and shoulders open. And then rising up, standing star. Turn back to the front of your mat if you went to the side. And go ahead and find your way to a dog. Extend and lengthen here. Yield and drop. When you feel ready, come forward into a plank. Feel that sense of integrity. Hugging in toward the center. Okay, and then coming down to the ground as you see fit. Shoulders roll a few times. Get them unglued. And inhale and lift to cobra pose. Exhale and melt back down. Either another cobra or hands out in front of you, whichever you like better. Stretch and lengthen. And then exhale and find your way down. Third time, choose a pathway that's right. Up on tall fours, move the spine. Feel free to swish your spine around, move your rib cage, move your hips. And then back towards child's pose. So when we're moving into that quieting, you know, this time of reflection, you can have times of stillness where your practice is very quiet. You can have times of high energy where your practice is very mobile and uh, more assertive, more stimulating. Okay, and it doesn't even mean that you only stay on the ground when you are trying to do uh, more quiet poses. You can do standing poses in a quiet way. You can do standing poses in a very vigorous way. So see what any day offers. What is it that you need for the mind, for the body, for the spirit? Come up to dog pose. The length and through your spine here, breathing well. Long exhales, even the simple act of a long exhale is something very soothing, quieting, releasing for the nervous system. 
Let's bring our right foot forward when you feel ready. Hands can come on blocks if you want them. All right, so stretch open your chest. And then we're gonna start to move when you're ready, straightening and bending the front knee. Just feeling into that sense of flow. All right, ground yourself, finding a lunge. And as you rise up, come to present lunge. All right, bring your arms maybe upward, maybe outward, maybe downward. Where is your body needing today? It's the subtle little things that can shift a practice from being very outward to being very inward. Can you feel the yielding and grounding? Can you feel the breath bring you back in tune to the inner self? And release your hands, back foot comes forward, fold in half, let the neck relax. Inhale for a halfway lift, melt again. Left foot forward, right foot back, come to a lunge on the side. Chest is open and free. And when you feel ready, begin to bend and straighten the front knee. Taking your time to feel into what you're feeling. What are you feeling? What part of your body is speaking loud? Can you dive into sensation? Can you stay fully present for your breathing? Let your brain just rest in the bed of your breath. All right. Around your legs. When you're ready, come up. Take your time, feel your roots. Find the sense of freedom and the freedom may be different. You may want to keep your hands on your hips. That might be a better sense of stability and freedom for you. Remember, we're always trying to seek this balance of stability and freedom. And it's found through yielding. It's found through breath. Hands back down onto the ground, back to a dog. Extend through the spine. Come forward into a plank. You can put your knees down whenever you need to. Integrate into the center. Find the floor when you're ready. Take your legs wide, take your arms down at your sides, palms facing the ground. Inhale, lift everything up, feel your back body from the crown to the toes. Engage that whole line. Breathe well while you're here. And then exhale and relax. Come up onto your hands and your knees. Move the spine about. Okay, settle back towards child's pose for a breath. And then we're going to find our way up to standing. So you can move through dog pose, or if you're skipping some arm work, you can always just stand up. However you get there is great. Find your way up to rise. Stick a block between your thighs if you like it. So, you know, one of the things that helps me in chair pose, my knee tends to act up periodically. You know, if you have a joint like that, that it just gets a little cranky for whatever reason periodically. A block can very much help you stabilize your SI joints, your hip joints, your knee joints um, in chair pose. So if that feels comfortable for you, use a block. If you don't feel like you need a block, you can do it with feet together or feet hip width apart for the posture. Okay, so again, once you get your legs organized, figure out what your upper body wants for today. Do you wanna keep your hands on your hips? Do you wanna reach your arms up overhead? Would you rather be spacious and wide or have your hands to your heart? Okay, so find the posture that's right for this moment. Can you balance the effort and the ease? Are you still in the breath? Knees draw back, a little bit more weight in the heels, stretch your feet. 
Drop down just a little bit, see if you can drop the weight. And then rise up to stand, straight legs. Keep the block if you're using a block. Pause in Tadasana. And we're gonna come back down into a chair again. Softly sit, okay? Reach the arms wherever you want them to be. Knees draw back, weight in the heels, a neutral curve in the lumbar spine. We're gonna twist here. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, you can keep your hands on your hips or arms can come out to the sides, twisting right. Coming back up on the in-breath, twisting left on your exhale. Arms up, twisting right. Inhale up, twisting left. Come on up to stand. Take that block away and fold forward. Relax your skull. Now into the inversion. Inhale for a halfway lift. Feel the backs of the legs open up, spread open the feet. And then melt again. Come up to stand and take your feet wide on the mat. So turn to the long edge. A standing star for a moment. Feel into that beautiful breath. And then when we're ready, turn your right foot out. We're going to find triangle pose. Tip your pelvis a little bit to the right. You can have your hand on a block or on your leg somewhere. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. So a lot of times, because we're leaning our torso to the right, we tend to lose track of what's happening in the left side. So ground through the left heel. See if you can feel even weight through your feet. Feel the extension in both sides of your rib cage. The crown and tail move away from each other. Kind of explore what's happening in your right knee. Is it caving inward toward the big toe side? Can you look and see? Can you keep the knee tracking to the middle foot? So sometimes we need to externally rotate that femur bone a little bit more. Stay grounded through the big toe mount. Loosen your knee to hyperextend the, ne the knee. Sometimes we lean and kind of sink down into a hyperextended knee. So unlock, ground through the back heel. And then rise all the way up. We're going to ping pong left and right here. So going to the other side, use a block if you need to. Find the breath, reach the arms out, tip over to the side, and bring your hand to rest on your leg or a block. So just let your pelvis find that sense of, we're, we're tipping. So it's unlike some of the other standing poses. You want your pelvis to tip to the left. Be very mindful that you're not locking and leaning your knee. Okay, so unlock that knee, the big toe of the left foot grounds. Feel the shaft of your femur bone lift up, up, up into the hip. See if you need a little external rotation in that femur bone. And if you do, be particularly mindful of staying grounded in the big toe mount. Remember to feel the deep root of that right leg. Feel the weight of the foot come down. Move your awareness to your spine. Can you lengthen the tail toward the back heel? Can you reach your crown? Is there a sense of openness across your chest? How about your shoulders? Are they creeping toward your ears? Can you drop them away? There's something you like about this pose. Come back up. I'm going to turn to the other side. Parsville Konasana. You can use a block or put your elbow on your knee. Find your way. Okay. Stretch your arm overhead. Oftentimes it's easy for our whole pelvis to push forward in this posture. Draw it back, especially the head of the femur bone. If that back leg, draw it back. Even weight again. Can you feel the left heel drop into the earth so you're supported from both legs? Feel the extension of your spine, the length of both sides of the ribs. Try not to have this overarching on the left side and a um, compression on the right. See if you can get both sides of the ribs to open. Neck and shoulders stay soft. Let the base of your skull relax. Come 
a moment. Turn your feet the other direction. Find your breath. Elbow comes down on your knee or your hand on a block. Feel the sense of space across your chest. As the arm comes up overhead, try to find that shoulder in a happy place where we're not over arched. We're finding that evenness through the ribs. Let your hands find a sense of softness so we don't have to grip our hands. Root into both feet. Can you feel that yielding and the feedback that it sends through your body? A breath in, a breath out. Try not to hold your breath. When you're ready, come on up. Turn your feet straight and we're going to come down into Padrita. So hands can be on blocks or the ground. You can put your head on a block if you want or the ground. So just find whatever feels right to you. Your hands can be in line with your feet. Your hands can be all the way out like dog pose, anywhere in between. Your feet can be pointing straight. Your toes can turn in a little bit. Try to open the backs of the knees without hyperextending the knees. So see if you can stretch your heels down and your sit bones up to give the fullness of the back legs without pushing into the backs of the knees from the front. Relax your head. Right, hands come back. On two blocks or the ground, if your head was down, heel toe your feet in so that you get to an Uttanasana, a place of ease, hip width apart, bend your knees and relax. Again, stick the block between your thighs and come into chair. Put your hands right on the heads of your femur bones, you know, right at the, root, the nook of your thighs and press. Okay, just get a little weight right in the thighs. Find your chest opening. All right, come on up to stand. Okay, let's take the block away. We're gonna come into figure four, but first, before we do that, we're just gonna bring our knee up to our chest. So just get used to standing on one leg, on the right leg, lift through your spine. And then release that foot down, change sides. Standing on that one leg, see if you can get the feeling that even if you're wobbly, and you can kind of soften the knee and give your weight down to the earth. Lose the hyperextension. Okay, and then release. Put your weight into your right foot, and we're just going to slowly move back and forth with our head. So we're externally rotating or internally rotating. Now, of course, you're stable, right? You have to use your core. You're standing on one leg for this. So there's a lot of stability that has to happen. You can let your upper body join in on this if you want. Imagine you're in water. All right, and that foot comes down, root into the left, and let's start this action with the right leg. It can go super slow where you're just kind of working into an external rotation of the hip and then an internal rotation of the hip, or you can be a little bit more fluid and get other parts of your body involved. Be very mindful of your standing knee. So we're not locking it out. We're using our core. Slow can be much better if you're feeling a little nervous about your knee or your hip or your balance. Now two feet down onto the ground and just feel into your breath. So remember, you can always do this pose with your buttocks against a piece of furniture or a wall if you need extra support for balance. Foot on top of left foot on top of right knee and find that chair pose again. Imagine you had a block. Wide sit bones. Draw your femur bones back into your hips. Choose any pathway with your arms 
that feels good. Now, if you're very much into experimenting, you can lengthen forward and bring your forearms down onto your shin. Just make sure you're not conquering the back. Keep a neutral spine. You can even come and bring your hands down onto the ground. You can work toward an arm balance, whatever pathway is available. Breathing well. And then rise up, knee coming high. Place that foot down onto the ground. Pause here, full breaths. In, full breaths out. Feel the roots of that left foot support you. We're going to take the right foot on top of the left knee. Now, a lot of times we tend to do weird things with our hips. We can stick our hip out or twist. See if you can keep your pelvis neutral. Okay, find your way into this. Hands can be together wide, up in the air, on the hips. You can come a little lower if you'd like. Some people find it easier to come lower. Sit bones draw back and wide. The spine is spacious. Lift that knee, just come up, put down onto the ground, pause in Tadasana. Inhale, lifting your arms to the sky and fold forward. Come down onto your knees. We're going to come into either reverse pigeon pose or pigeon pose. So hopefully that um, figure four prepared your hips to feel very open. Doesn't matter which pathway you're choosing. On your back, right foot on top of left knee, or on your front with your right leg forward. Find the breath. Extending the spine. Breathing deeply. Sit bones stay wide. Rest your head, either the back of your head on the ground or your forehead on the ground, hands or a block. Start to feel into this sense of introspection. The quiet places. Let's transition to the next side. Feeling our way. Maybe you need different support. Maybe you're on your back. Maybe you're on your front. Whatever works. Wide sit bones. Spacious spine. Resting skull. Feel the breath. Coming back up. Down onto your back. Bring your knees to your chest and rock a little. It's simple twist. Put your feet down. Lift your hips up. Scoot them to the right. 
Lift your knees back up and drop them to the left. Enjoy the twist. Back up, scoop the hips over to the left, knees come up and drop right. And any variations that you like in here. If you are a particular fan of the leg, top leg straightening, you can do that. If you're a particular fan of stretching your quadriceps, you can just you know come out of the twist and grab your thigh or grab your foot to stretch your quad. So remember to always allow the practice to be what it wants to be. You don't have to listen to me. This is one of the beautiful joys of doing yoga on your own is that you do not have to feel like you're disrupting anything to go off on your own little tangent. <clears throat> Come out of the pose. And we're gonna find Supta Baba Konasana. So a nice full one. So get all your props, okay? So whatever you have to support yourself in this posture, if you have bolsters, if you have pillows, if you have blankets, to take what's available to you so that you are comfortable. Sometimes I put one block underneath my bolster. Sometimes I put two. <clears throat> I try to always have a blanket for underneath each of it. And then I often try to have a pillow for underneath my arms. And if I'm feeling really good, then I grab a blanket to put uh, under my head. Okay. And then if I really want more, I'll grab a blanket to put over my body so I stay nice and warm. So look how many, I'm now using one, two, three, four blankets, two pillows, two blocks and a bolster. And you probably maybe don't have all that, but <clears throat> whatever you do have, okay? So just to show you, I'm sitting in front of my bolster. That might be blankets for you. Couch pillows do a really good job because they're nice and firm. Soles of the feet come together. And I'm going to take support underneath my outer legs. And I have built this ramp with a nice pillow for my head. And now I have pillows for underneath my elbows and I have a blanket to keep me warm. So that's, try to make a, as big of a nest as you can. We're gonna be here for about five minutes. Okay. Right, so take your time to feel that you really are in <clears throat> a nest. No part of your body is hanging, okay? Every part of you feels nurtured and supported. That includes your skin being warm, it includes your head being able to melt, a comfortable place for your spine, enough support for your outer hips where your, uh, or your outer legs, so your hips feel like they're not strained. Find your happy nest. Your only job is to breathe and melt. If this time of year is meant for listening, dreaming, and resting. Nurturing. This pose is quintessentially that.
you feel free to want to to make a transition into Shavasana. If you're super active, just stay there. If your stone sits flat in front of you, or even if you're just lying flat, melt your body one more time, moving your head. start to move your body however it feels good you can straighten your legs if they're still just bobbing and resting ankles and toes feels good eventually finding your way up to sit Take your time. There's no rush to transition. Once you are upright, notice the renewal of your practice. Are you at ease? Do you feel relaxed and present? Are you grounded in your body a little bit more? Whatever your gifts are today in your practice, let's bring our hands together and bow, offering this energy to someone who needs it.
Namaste. Thank you, everyone.